Hello friends and welcome back to another video on the difficult path. In this video series, this is my story. In today's video, I wanted to talk about the importance of church membership. Church membership is important. I could probably just end it right there. I could add to it, scripture affirms that <laughs> church membership is important. However, it would be void of my story, wouldn't it? So, I think before I moved here to Colorado Springs, I was um I can't think of the word. Dang it. Disconnected. I was disconnected from church. Like I wasn't going to church. I wasn't a member of a church. And I was actually in pursuit of becoming connected. And, you know, <clears throat> I I had I had a few months prior to COVID became a member. Right. I did the membership class, became a member, and I was attending their uh city groups. Then COVID shut everything down. <clears throat> and then once my church began to meet publicly again, I was trying to get back in there and it was unsuccessful. I think a month or so down the line, I ended up having to work nights like I we went from days to nights and I worked, you know, it was mandatory to work six nights a week because <clears throat> I was the superintendent's helper and I needed to be there or else they would replace me. <clears throat> so church on Sunday morning wasn't an option. It's uh when it didn't happen. And yeah, so that was probably, I don't know, a year and a half, two years, because it was a little bit before, like I said, COVID, I was trying to get back into um, connection with the church and, and doing what's healthy and productive for, for uh, Christians. When I moved here to Colorado Springs, I had every intention on researching the church that was, you know, biblically sound and healthy. And little did I know what the next two years of my life would entail. And not being a prophet or having foresight or knowledge. <clears throat> Once my health issues developed, it shut down the option for church removed it off took took it right off the table no more no more option it was not an option because <clears throat> i had to force myself to go to the doctors like it was it was it took everything out of me to go to the doctor to see the doctor um it took everything out of me to try to brush my teeth or fix my food and so yeah <clears throat> going to church wasn't an option and i didn't i didn't get that privilege or um, that opportunity until like March, April, May, May of last year, um, April, I was here. And then May, I reached out to Emmaus Road Reformed Baptist Church, which was one of the churches on my list. It was the closest one here to the shelter. Um, and so now I'm, I'm currently waiting to become a member. I've put in my application, going through the process. Uh, meanwhile, you know, I, <clears throat> I do what I can to be a healthy member. You know, like I'm waiting for the membership, but I'm acting like a member. Like I'm establishing, you know, relationships. I'm building relationships. I am, you know, helping to serve. I am going out with them on their um, evangelistic endeavors to Planned Parenthood and, you know, uh, they do some street street preaching. 
And so I go out to help support that. Um, yeah, and so I help where I can. Um, as I'm still dealing with my issues, of course. But, yeah. Um, I think where I was going was during the two years of my new impairment um facing those difficulties they were very dark times and were even more so because of not being in fellowship not having you know um not being able to to and i just losing all my words um not to be not being able to receive encouragement um You know, not being able to receive prayer, not being around people who are like minded to, you know, just reassure me and affirm me through scripture, you know, of of what's happening and taking place in my life. Um, definitely grateful to God for his grace in doing that work. And <clears throat> Yeah, but um, the point being disconnected from church and fellowship, and being able to take communion and worship and sit under the, the the ministering of God's word was it was it made it it made my situation worse. It was more difficult because that's what the body's for, right? It's supposed to it's supposed to look out for the other parts. It's supposed to serve, you know. It's supposed to help and support and encourage and yeah so i didn't i didn't get none of that i am thankful for god ministering his grace and for his spirit you know for sure the fact that he was standing beside me and carrying me through um i am not going to like take away from that reality um because it that's what <laughs> that's exactly what happened like he he definitely was standing there and he definitely was taking care of me and he definitely carried me through um, <clears throat> and I would have to say that he accomplished a lot in me um, <clears throat> during that time let's see um hopeless it was it was a time of hopelessness because i didn't have people to give me hope to help encourage me right um even though god was ministering to me through his spirit it still was broken like like yeah um if, if God wasn't there working and moving to will according to his good pleasure, I'd have been lost. Like, I'd have been lost for sure. Um, not being able to be a part of the body and, and to partake in that worship left me empty and alone. Like, I was, I was, I was broken. And... The one thing that I knew that would bring comfort and hope just seemed so far out of my reach. Like it was just so distant from me. Um, so, so far removed. Man, it made things dark. I, on top of that, didn't know if I was ever going to make it back to church and actually be able to, to become a, a healthy member, you know, like didn't know if I was that was going to be an option because of the fear of death and just the the feeling that you know man I could die at any moment and not knowing if I was going to wake up um the next day all that kind of great and glorious stuff I'm definitely grateful that God like gave me the importance or gave me the the ability to see 
how important it was to read scripture um, throughout the time in Texas before I moved here during COVID and working. I was able to hold to um, a discipline of, of reading scripture. And that made a world of difference being connected to God's word, word. even if it was just a, um, a chapter a day, it was still something, right? In times past, I have walked away from church, you know, due to my bad theology and not wanting to be a hypocrite. I just, I have just disconnected from everything and, uh, you know, squandered my wealth. <laughs> <clears throat> but this time as God was changing my theology it was in that change was the embedded reality that and I need to maintain some type of discipline in my life you know to keep me focused to keep me grounded and that was the reading of scripture um it did it did wonders for me and when God brought me to the place to where that became a daily thing um, in the midst of my health issues, it began to really change and shift my perspective and bring me out of that hopelessness. Um, and then it was more of like a, a longing, like an emptiness that needed to be filled to to be a part of the body. Like it was, it was, it was, it was intense. My heart hurt so bad I would plead with God like I stopped praying for healing um for my I just I wanted to be healed I like I wanted to have enough strength to go to church I just wanted to go worship God sit under the ministering of his word and take communion you know that's all I wanted to do and that's basically what about what I was able to do when I started going to church that's that's about where I was that's I could just sit there like I it took a couple of months for me to even begin to try to build relationships because of my symptoms and stuff but I was in church you know and I was worshiping God um and and then it kind of yeah anyway another another subject um different story church membership and its importance okay so My heart hurt. That's where I was. Man, God had put such a longing for fellowship within me that I would literally start weeping, like pleading with God, heal me so that I could go to church, man. I just wanted to be a part of the church. I wanted to be a healthy functioning part in a healthy body. It, it was, yeah. And so I would just start weeping, you know, because I wasn't able to. And then there was that well, I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to, you know, and so, but anyway, <clears throat> God was subtly having his way in my life by inspiring me to do certain things that would begin to produce glory to him. Like he would begin to move me to, um, for example, my blogs. Uh, my blogs were a big transition in how I looked at my situation and my response to God. And, you know, as I, I developed the content, God through that content was working in me. And my, my blogs are, are definitely one of the main reasons why I'm I'm, I'm doing my vlogs, um, doing what I'm doing today, like pursuing this work that I believe that God has set before me. So <clears throat> in that was the establishing and the reality of the need for, for communion, um, to be a part of the body, to like, for sure, understand that it's not an option. Like, there are so many people who are misled, believing that, you know, it's okay not to be part of the church, not to be a member of a church. It's not, it's, I mean, biblical nowhere, I mean, um, scripture nowhere affirms such a 
a position. In fact, scripture is more than clear that <clears throat> we're supposed to be a part of the body. We're supposed to be, we're supposed to, to continue to gather, right? We're supposed to continue to meet. Uh, we're not supposed to stop. We're supposed to do this in remembrance of, right? We're supposed to continually remember so that we can remind one another, you know, and, and push each other on. You know, iron sharpens iron. You know, we're supposed to be submissive to leadership. Um, we're supposed to submit, right? We're supposed to serve one another. We're supposed to not be a burden to those who are in leadership, who God has, you know, ordained and, and gifted as teachers and leaders in the church. We're supposed to be humble, right? We're supposed to humble ourselves under God's hand so that he can lift us up. And that's the reason why there's a need to submit unto leadership. We need to be taught. We need to be instructed through the, through the, through the, um, through the ministering of the word. We need a right knowledge and understanding of God. And that's what comes through the body. The body is what I don't know. How can I say it? Governs that. Um, it's not just one person speaking up saying, this is the way, follow me. It's like, you know, no, it's, 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 it's a, a structure. Um, it's several people saying, you know, yeah, this is, this is good. And, and, and scriptural, you know, this is biblical. Um, this is, this is, what we want and yeah so this is what we affirm um just but to be taught to be corrected <clears throat> to be encouraged you know i mean you can't grow you can't you can't be healthy apart from the body it's i mean it's so clear that Scripture teaches us that we are supposed to continue, like, um, just repeating myself. We are supposed to continue gathering and meeting, like our our pers we uh, persecuted brothers and sisters across the world that are losing property, they're losing um, loved ones, even their own lives, and they continue in the midst of that to gather, like. The early church, you know, they were suffering persecution and they continued to gather. They didn't stop gathering. You know, here in America, we don't suffer persecution. There is none of that. <coughs> it would be a whole different ball game if there were um, sinners standing outside the church on the way to church, throwing rocks at us and, and cussing at us, spitting on us because we were going to church. You know, there would there would be a different it would. Yeah. It would be a different reality. Um, but Paul, in his teaching, is communicating that reality by using the body as, as his, um, his example, right, right? To communicate the fact that we are one and we are supposed to come together as functioning parts and function as a whole that that you know in a way that that's healthy in the way that god has designed and so there's that structure for the church that we need to be that we need to adhere to you know we need to give ourselves to um we need to set ourselves excuse me as believers to to want that you know like to need that like it's 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 a it's a must not because i'm forced to do it but because i can't live any other way like you know like yeah like life just doesn't feel right if i'm doing anything other than and <clears throat> So, of course, I have veered off severely from my notes, um, but it's still, like, 
Paul is driving home that that reality that each and every individual is vital to the body. We all have a part, you know, we're all a part, we're all a piece, we all have our piece, or we all have our work, right? Um, that area where we, we function, um, where we're gifted, that we need to, to be intentional to, to serve and to give and to do and to be um, in order to be healthy. We just, outside of that, you can't be healthy. You can't, there, you can't be healthy. Lone Rangers, there, there's no such thing as a Lone Ranger in Christianity. You're just not healthy. You can't be healthy outside of that. That's uh, why people, you know, end up in grievous sin. Um, they become delusional. There's cultish. They had, they um, adopt cultish, you know, um, practices or means. They end up drinking the fruit juice, right? Like they fall into a pit you just you fall into traps there's such dangers you know with the you have the 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 lion who's you know seeking to destroy you're in the midst of ravenous 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 wolves and there's so many dangers that you know you you really you can't you can't really survive on your own you know, apart from the body, that's why it it has been described as it has and and established, you know, you're a vital part and you need to be healthy within a healthy community to function and, and to grow and to flourish, right? To to be a part of the vine <coughs> is essentially saying function as your part in the body. Right. Um, and then you'll bear fruit. You'll be healthy and the, the body will be healthy. Right. If, if the, the body is off at some point, then the whole the whole body suffers with it. Right. So if if one part's afflicted, the whole body um, feels it. it. It affects the whole the whole of the body. And you can really see that like in theology, it's it's. It's essential to have a right knowledge of God because you get off and you're in idolatry and you're not, when you talk about God, you're not, you're not speaking right knowledge. You're not representing God correctly, right? It's according to your thoughts, feelings, or human experience instead of scripture. And so the whole, the whole body, that form or that, that body, I don't know how to say it really, um, with the non-reformed body, I guess there's a reformed body and a non-reformed body. Um, they proclaim Christ, but yet they don't, they don't rightly, um, they don't rightly speak of God. They don't, they don't, they're not, <clears throat> They're sick, basically, and it affects that body, um, is, I guess, what I'm trying to say. And so you can see, because a part's not, like, the head's not functioning right, so that body doesn't function right, um, because it's not believing in, in, in the right Jesus. It's not believing in the God of Scripture, and... Yeah, so it's a whirlwind of a mess, you know, it's the blind leading the blind and, and, you know, they're clearly about to fall off the cliff and, you know, yeah. So there's a functioning body that's healthy and then there's a body that doesn't and it's just like, you know, Jesus said there'll be many who will, who will say, Lord, Lord, did we not? do like we 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 know you we had a, a relationship with you and we did all of these wonderful things in your your name and and he'll tell them you know depart from me um because you were not a functioning you were not a healthy functioning body <clears throat> but anyway 
back to the point. Church membership is important. It is vital. You can't grow. Um, you can't bear fruit. It, it's impossible for you outside of the body. And, and I'm not saying that there's not times or moments when you are disconnected um, because many are and do. They become connected. There, there's brothers and sisters in non-reformed theology who are part of a broken body who will come out of that. God will deliver them from that and set them free and bring them into the healthy body, you know, and they will become healthy, productive members at that point. Um, but right now they're not, they're not healthy. And it's because of, yeah, other issues. Um, but specifically for a healthy, you know, biblically sound, uh, community, it's important. It's that's why it's vital to find such a church. It's that's why we you just can't go to a church that makes you feel good, that you know preaches what you like to hear, or want to hear, or you know, um, yeah. It's not about you. It's about God. You know, find a church that glorifies God, that preaches the word, the good and the bad. Um, it talks about heaven and hell. You know, it speaks of God delivering people through his grace and mercy and, and sending people to hell through his justice. You know, a biblically sound church. Um, <clears throat> find that church, become a member, and be a part of the body. You know, develop a healthy functioning role that you fill you know whatever whatever part you are you know i mean i'm probably like the pinky toe like for real that little thing you know that doesn't like to move down there and you get stubbed and yeah causes all kinds of problems um but i'm 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 trying to fill that position like you know i'm trying to function in that position as god has designed because that's his will. It's his will. It's his will for us to be in a church, to be a member, to be healthy, not just, you know, going to church and doing church stuff, you know, and claiming to be Christian. And, um, <clears throat> yeah. So, so far off from my notes, it's not even funny. Um, but I think I've stressed it, you know, I'm, I'm, may not have communicated clearly and real effectively but i know i've stressed healthy functioning part of the body and the need for church membership and submission and serving and all of that good stuff you know i know i hit that nail on the head for sure um <clears throat> I know when I came to church, I, I guess one quick last point, it's easy for people to be a part of a church and still feel alone. I've heard that a lot. I've experienced that a lot. Um, I ex experience that even now and it's still with my health issues because it's it's hard for me to give myself to, you know, be intentional to be a part of and to like include myself. I'm used to excluding myself and separating myself and, and only like engaging when I'm engaged. Like, you know, like I'll, I'll engage with somebody if they engage with me, but for me to go engage, you know, it's, it's a different issue. Um, and I know it's, it's one of two things. It's me not being a healthy functioning part of the body and it's to believe in a lie because it's a lie. I have friends at church. You know what I'm saying? I have relationships and, and I fellowship and I'm part of the church. I serve, you know, I'm, I'm being as healthy as I can in the midst of dealing with what I'm dealing with. And so I, I recognize the lie and, and I cast it down, you know, and I replace it with truth. I am, I am, you know, I'm being intentional and I'm trying to make myself intentionally engage and 
and serve and be helpful. And so I'm doing my part. <laughs> and as I'm doing my part, my role will begin to, you know, I don't know how to say it, develop and I will feel more comfortable and it will be easier for me to, on that sense or in that sense, um, relax in the position and the part or the role that I'm playing and the function that I have. And yeah, so it's important. It's, it's vital and you just can't, you can't be, man, you can't be Christian without it. You can't, you can't be a healthy Christian without it. So find it and obtain it at whatever cost, you know, like really pursue it because it's, it's more important than anything else. Like your, your, your spiritual church family, that that's the part, that's the body that you're a part of. That's your family. And, you know, once you start looking at it from that point of view, um, it becomes important to you because family is supposed to be important to you, you know? But anyway, having said all that, remember that there is a day that's coming when God will judge all of mankind according to his holy and perfect standard. And on that day, he will punish everyone who has broken his law. The only hope on that day for the sinner is the justifying works of Jesus Christ who through his life, death, and resurrection made a way for sinners like you to receive mercy instead of justice. Today scripture declares harden not your heart. Today God commands all of mankind to repent from their sin. So while there's today, as long as you have breath in your lungs, repent from your sin. Call upon the name of the Lord, right? believe in him and trust in his his righteous works until next time stay on the difficult path